And joining me now are retired Admiral James Davides, of course, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, and Michael Allen, former Special Assistant to President George W. Bush and Senior Director on the National Security Council. Admiral Davides, first to you. Uh, it is the first time I, that my experience, at least, correct me if I'm wrong, that China and Russia jointly were engaged in this. Is the U.S. doing enough to protect the coast? At this level of naval operations, this is very significant to see 11 ships. That's a flotilla. That's the size of an American carrier strike group, one of which I commanded a few years back, as you know. So quite significant. North Pacific, not terribly surprising. Both nations work there. We also see them operating together on land on the Siberian border. We've seen small numbers of ships in the Baltic Sea in the heart of Europe. But this is a big concentration of naval firepower. U.S. responded appropriately, sending four of our Arleigh Burke guided missile destroyers. Those are big, powerful ships. They can handle anything. They're very experienced up in those waters. So um, when you put it all together, Andrea, what I worry about here is miscalculation. I don't think either side intends to uh, shoot this up, but when young people, particularly those aircraft shots you showed, or those destroyers swerving around each other, um, young people can make mistakes. People in their 20s and 30s are driving those ships, flying those aircraft. It can lead to miscalculation and incident. Then we've really got a difficult situation, so one to watch. At a time when we don't have military-to-military -military communications, normal military-to-military -military comms still with Beijing, Michael, this is unusual in that we've seen Chinese being more and more aggressive in the South China Seas and response perhaps to what the expansion of our marine base in the Philippines and Guam. But to see it with Russia this close, what is China up to here at a time when we're trying to reconnect, reestablish relations? We're hearing that Gina Raimondo, the Commerce Secretary, is going to be going, the next cabinet member, to be going to China. That's right. I think China is trying to remind us that as we have a naval presence, presence in the South China Sea, they too can come near our shores, not quite in our waters, but very near our shores. It's also a reminder that the Arctic is very important. I think that's a place where the United States is not well positioned to take on China. And of course, this is yet another reminder, although they do exercise somewhat frequently, certainly annually, but it's a reminder that the Russians and the Chinese have a very serious, close partnership that goes not only through sanctions and political cooperation, but military cooperation, as you saw with the flotilla. It comes at an interesting time also, because at a time when there was a summit in Saudi Arabia, and China did attend this summit, you know, really called for, by Zelensky, Russia not invited. So, Admiral Stavidis, if we talk about Ukraine, uh, let's talk about what was happening there, more action over the weekend, and now uh, according to Ukrainian intelligence, Admiral, this has not been sourced by the U.S. at all. Ukraine has actually uh, claimed that there was a, a Russian threat. They've arrested a woman involved in an alleged plot against Zelensky's life. Yeah. Let's take the, the back half of your comment first and, and simply point out Zelensky would say in the military is the center of gravity of this conflict, center of gravity, that about which all else revolves. So if Putin could take him out, he would do so in one second. And he'll use drones, he'll use internal insider threat, he'll go after Zelensky again and again and again. He's that important. In terms of stepping back and looking at the situation, land war, kind of moving slowly, but I see the Ukrainians picking up the pace, uh, particularly as the summer unfolds. Air war, kind of a draw right now. Uh, Putin launching a lot of drones, Ukrainians shooting most of them down, Ukrainians launching drones back against Moscow, um, kind of a draw in the air. And at sea, you know, the admiral's going to mention the sea, um, pretty exciting footage over the weekend of a uh, Ukrainian sea drone on the surface, sink, not quite sinking, but seriously damaging a significant right. Russian warship. That's a pretty striking set of video 
I'd say the Ukrainians are still on the front foot at this moment. Close with this. That diplomatic conference you mentioned might be the beginning of a little bit of movement towards some kind of talks. We'll see as the summer unfolds. It's also a movement, Michael, on by MBS because he's really reasserting himself with some U.S. help. Jake Sullivan was there, uh, you know, giving U.S. blessing to all of this. He's no longer the pariah that candidate Joe Biden in 2019 said Saudi Arabia was going to be forever because of, you know, what happened to Khashoggi. And that was, you know, an answer to me at a, at a primary debate. And he's not only gone fist bumped and all the rest, but now MBS is really asserting himself. And there's a lot of talk by Israel that despite everything that's happened on the Israeli front, that they're seriously re-engaging as to possible normalization with Israel of diplomatic relations with the U.S. What they want from the U.S. is very much a part of that piece. I think Jake Sullivan's travel there is indicative of a real push by the Biden administration to try and reach a normalization agreement between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Israel. We've seen repeated newspaper articles that the president himself is very interested in this. And I think this is a way to get U.S.-Saudi relations back on track. They've obviously been very difficult since the Biden administration began. I think the Saudis have a long list of asks of things things they want from the United States before they would agree to such a normalization agreement, chief among them a civilian nuclear program, which I think is going to be hard for us to get there. But there's so much in the air and there's so much in the offing. I think Jake is not only there to support some of these efforts on Ukraine, but also to get the Saudis to talk and maybe normalize with the Israelis. Which would be a, a coup in the Biden administration's cap, but it's something they really have to in terms of the Abraham Accords, they have to give credit to the Trump administration. That is something that they started. That's right. Mike Allen, thank you so much. It's good to see you. And thank Admiral Stavridis, as always, it's always great to have the Navy man. Thank you. <laughs>